Good evening sa tanan. Welcome usab sa itong New Covenant in Christ evening service na ay maayong mensahe si Lord para sa tuang tanan karon. And I cannot help but feel that the Lord has been speaking to me very clearly kung unsa yung mensahe nga ipahatag sa ato karon. So please don't miss this message. The Lord is wanting to help us to receive something na gusto niya ihatag sa atong kinabuhi. Before that, mag sa atong mensahe at sa atong sa church declaration. Sabay-sabay sa atong tanan. Today, I receive all that Christ died to give me. His abundant life, limitless grace, boundless mercies, divine restoration of youth and overflowing provisions. Today, I take hold of all God's blessings, healings, and miracles. I shall be transformed from glory to ever-increasing glory and victory to overwhelming victory. I will enter the promised land of the believer's rest, seeing His mighty restoration in each and every area of my life. I proclaim that I am God's beloved, His highly favored child, His powerful servant, and His overcoming champion. And because I am blessed to overflowing, I will be a blessing to all. In Jesus' name, Amen. You will receive kung unsa imong gideclare sa Ginoo as we will learn sa mensahe sa Ginoo para sa ato akarong gabi na. Before ta mag sa atong title, mag sa ato sa atong opening reading. Basahon na kung gikan sa Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30, 32 to 34 sa New International Reader's Version. Nakabotang dere. Israel's army had faith. So the walls of Jericho fell down. It happened after they had marched around the city for seven days. Verse 32, What more can I say? I don't have the time to tell about all the others. I don't have the time to talk about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah. I don't have time to tell about David and Samuel and the prophets. So makita na to dere, that the raw author of Hebrews, which I believe si Paul na siya, and many Bible scholars believe na si Paul na, although wala niya gi pirmahan ang letter to the Hebrews, Ingon diri sa author sa Hebrews nga ang walls of Jericho fell down after seven days of marching. And nakabutang po diri nga grabe po ang faith sa mga tao tong una sa Old Testament. Like sila David, sila Samuel, sila Barak, sila Jephthah, sila Samson and Gideon. Pero uh, wala na daw time nga iha pang i-discuss tanan diri sa Hebrews 11 ning mga mighty men of faith. Okay, eh. Let's go on to verse 33 to 34. Verse 33, because of their faith, they took over kingdoms. They ruled fairly. They received the blessings God had promised. They shut the mouths of lions. They put out great fires. They escaped being killed by swords. Their weakness was turned into strength. They became powerful in battle. They beat back armies from other countries. Amazing kayong gibuhat ni Lord sa kinabuhin ng mga Kristohanon. Kini mga saints, kini mga predecessors, kini mga believers tong una sa Old Testament that we are reading about, unya kailangan na tumatunan sa ilang kinabuhi. Unsa atong mensahe karon? Ang atong title sa mensahe ni Lord para sa Torah karong gabi una is receiving your breakthrough. Remember, nga karon is the NCIC churches um, year of transformation and breakthrough. And it's not yet too late. It's still halfway through the year. So there was still time to receive the breakthrough. Kung sa magina pangandoy ni sa ginoo, kung sa magina pangayo ni masaya in terms of ministry, in terms of health, in terms of healing, in terms of finances, possible pa na mahitabo because na ay amazing nga theme of the Lord si Lord para sa to akarong year. Kung sa mga mga breakthrough nga receive nila pastor, mo ni siya nakabutang dali sa verse 33 sa 34. Akong gi highlight in yellow para dali na to masundan. Nakadawat sila, they took over kingdoms. They ruled fairly. They received the blessings God had promised. They escaped being killed. Their weakness was turned into strength. And they became powerful in battle. Isn't that nice? Pagkanindot sa mga breakthrough, ipanghatag ni Lord sa ilaha. Dili lang sa ilaha, pero para po na sa atua. Mau po na siyang breakthrough. Ang gusto ni Lord ma-receive na to sa atong kinabuhi. Gusto po niya ma-receive na to the blessings that He has promised. Gusto po niya mag ta in life like Romans 5 tells us. Gusto po niya nga maka-escape po ta sa danger. Gusto po niya nga ang weakness na to will be turned into strength. And gusto po niya maging powerful ta sa iyang kingdom. Muna ang gusto ni Lord sa ito. Muna ang atong title for tonight is Receiving Your Breakthrough. Unsa na to madawat ang breakthrough? First, basaho na to dere ang story sa Joshua chapter 5 verse 15, 16, and 20. Nakabotang dari, at dawn of the seventh day, they started out again. But this time, they went around the city not once, but seven times. The seventh time, as the priest blew a long, loud trumpet blast, 
Joshua yelled to the people, Shout, the Lord has given us the city. Verse 20, when the people heard the trumpet blast, they shouted as loud as they could. And suddenly the walls of Jericho crumbled and fell before them. And the people of Israel poured into the city from every side and captured it. Kung ato ka sa Jericho karon, makita ko dako nga mound dito. It's called a tell. Abu na lang ang walls sa Jericho because inanak amazing ang power sa Gino. Na asya breakthrough gihatag sa mga people of Israel na gitagaan sila ng instruction sa Gino. Gitagaan sila ng instructions to march around the city seven times as mentioned ganiya sa Hebrews 11. And on the seven sa six times hilom ra sila. Pero on the seventh day, they marched seven times. And on that seventh day, after they marched seven times, the priests blew the trumpets and they shouted and the walls came tumbling down. Unsa man ang importansya na, Pastor? Why is that significant? Because breakthrough means you have to break through something. Kining word nga breakthrough, ang ginagamit karon sa mga kristuhanan, sa mga preachers karon, sa mga writers karon, it means that you have to break through something. Tapa kay to, nice kay tong word nga gihatag ni Pastor Giovanni sa atong receiving meeting last Wednesday because gi-point out niya sa ato nga before na to receive ang promises sa Ginoo, now say trials, now say testings, now say mga gian na to mga difficulties. Tinuod gina, makita na to na sa tibuok Bible na agyoy something to break through. For example, si Joshua, he had to attack Jericho but Jericho was a very difficult city to attack. He nga tag-ask ang walls. Bukat kay thick kaayo that people were actually living in the walls of Jericho. Si Rahab lived in the wall of Jericho. Kung masahaw ninyo diri sa Joshua, sa book of Joshua. And even si Joseph, ni Agi siya grabe kaayo nga nagbihimo siyang slave, nahimo siyang priso, nahimo siyang kanang prisoner because in the end, God raised him up as highest in command dito sa, book, sa land of Egypt. And also, even si David, before siya naging hari, he had to run for his life because Saul was trying to kill him. So makita ni Mudiha, even si Jesus, as mentioned ni Pastor Giovanni, even si Jesus, na ay testing, na ay trials, na ay temptations. Before, after, and before na receive niya ang victory after the resurrection. In fact, nakabotang sa Philippians 2, it's because he humbled himself on the cross. That's why God raised his name to be above every name, above the earth, on the earth, and under the earth sa Philippians chapter 2. Even sa pagsulod sa mga Hodeo, sa land karon nilang gina-occupy, sa Canaan, sa land flowing with milk and honey. Ingon si Lord sa ila, ginahatag, nahatag na nako sa inyo, honey, nyo taang kini. Pero, napagyapo yung mga higante dito. So breakthrough means you have to break something through. It's not as easy as picking into a cookie jar. Nga dili mo na siya ginatawag breakthrough ang tawag na because it's not just like nagsulod kasi mong kamot sa usa cookie jar nga kwao nimo. Dili na nakasayon sometimes. According to patterns in the word of God, we see that Christians will always undergo trials, temptations, and testings before they can receive their promotion, before they can receive their breakthrough. And that is why there is a need for transformation. Mo naging nantan Lord, kailangan na year of transformation and breakthrough because unless mag-transform ta, dili po na to mag-breakthrough ang wall. The best example of breakthrough ang makita na ko there is a word of God is there is a Jericho because tag-ask ang wall, dako ka ang wall. And because of that, Israel could not conquer this first city. Mo ni pinakauna nga city, pinakauna nga syudad nga ilang gi-conquer pag sulod nila sa promised land, pag tabok nila sa River Jordan under the leadership of Joshua. And then ang nahitabo diri is gitagaan sila ng instruction sa Ginoo. Nga weird nga instruction. Nga nung weird man, Pastor. Wala man sila giingnan nga magdala sila pang tiltil. Wala sila giingnan magdala sila mga tools pang guba og hole. Wala sila giingnan magdala sila ladder. Wala sila giingnan nga magdala sila og mga martilyo or mga jackhammer or mga dagko nga sledgehammer or mga bara de cabra. Wala. Ang gisulti ni Lord sila, pagtuyok lang, hilom, first six days, and then on the seventh day, sing it at the top of your voice after pagtuyok ninyo seven times isn't that crazy pero kung una na oni mo ang mga pamaagi ni Lord is sometimes does not make sense pero ang amazing niya ni eh, is kung nagkonsulta ka sa Ginoo kung naminaw kag tarong sa Ginoo even when his ways does not make sense if you follow it correctly there will always be victory and there will always be breakthrough 
Jericho is a good example sa breakthrough sa Ginoo because na ay wall. Every blessing na asa tubangan nato, everything na ginapangandoy nato, whether it be healing, whether it be a breakthrough sa finances, whether it be a breakthrough sa atong circumstances, sa atong mga problems, even ang salvation sa mga miyembro sa atong family, na ay wall ang kaaway. As thick as the walls of Jericho, nagibutang sa atong atubangan. Mo nang gitawag siyang breakthrough. Kay kailangan ni mo i-break ang wall para makalusot ka sa wall para ma-reach ni mo tong blessing na gusto ihatag ni Lord sa kada osa sa ato. Mo nang gitawag siyang breakthrough. You have to break something. You have to break that wall. You have to break that barrier. You have to break that sagabal, that hindrance, yung ibutang sa kaaway sa mga tubangan. Aron ma-reach in mo, ang yung makuha ni mo, ang mga blessings, or even the ang spoils, or ang pag-conquer sa city of Jericho. So makita ni mo diha, what is one of those? Unsa saan na ito pag-receive sa itong breakthrough, Pastor? Receiving our breakthrough man ka, ang ato ang topic karon. Well, tagaan ta magtulo ka sikreto nga nakabutang sa Bible nga klaro po kay sa mga readings nato karon kung unsa ang way nga madawat nato atong breakthrough even unsa ang way nga madawat po nato atong transformation karong year nato of transformation and breakthrough ready na first there is a Joshua chapter 6 makita nato diha there is a verse 16 nagingon si Joshua shout the Lord has given us the city unsa yung ginabuhat diha naga declare si Joshua og mga maayo nga butang pareha sa atong gibuhat ganiha sa sugod sa ato ang sa ato ang uh, service nagbuhat og church declaration gisabay-sabay nato og sulti that is very powerful because when you declare mangod kung unsay mga gusto ni Lord sa si imong kinabuhi kung declare nimo ang mga promises ni Lord sa Bible according sa Isaiah 55 verse 11 dili nimo pwede ibalik ang pulong sa Ginoo sa iyaha nga kawang lang nga ineffective, nga walay mahitabo. Always kina ako ibalik ni mo ang word ni Lord sa iya ha, iyang ihatag sa ato ha, kung unsa itong atong ibalik sa iya, ng word niya. And si Josh pa here, giing na naman siya sa ginoo, nga inyuhan na lang syudad. Pero wala pa man sila nakasulod sa city. Wala pa ganit nahulog ang walls. Pero nag-declare na si Joshua daan, the Lord has given us the city. Unsa na? Past tense, future tense, present tense. Past tense na siya. Because ang declaration ni Joshua, human na. Because according to the word of God, the righteousness, even there is a New Testament, the righteousness of faith speaks. Basta gani ang ato ang faith, gani na gani tayo inani nga klase nga righteousness gikan sa ginoo, ginasulti nato kung sa atong ginatuuhan, aron madawat po nato kung unsa atong ginatuuhan. Mabitaw na kabutang dari sa Proverbs chapter 13, verse 2 to 3 sa NIV. From the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things. Let's add to that's a verse 3. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, and those who speak rashly will come to ruin. So, klaro kayo dere, nga nakabutang dere nga, bantayan na to kung sa itong ginasulti. Kaya kung sa itong ginasulti, kung negative atong declare sa itong kinaboy, negative pa itong madawat, mo na ingon sila, when we guard our lips, we preserve our lives. Unya kung basta-basta lang po tayong magsulting mga irresponsible ng mga butang like patay, unsa na lang, kapait ba or bugo ka or something like that. Kana may nana gahi kagahi gini mo ulo. Whenever we declare things like that, we will come to ruin. But sa verse two nakabutang sa NIV klaro kaya from the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things. So kung naatay ginasulting ng maayo. Madawat nato to mga maayong atong ginasulti and therefore gitawag siyang the fruit of our lips and therefore madawat nato tong good things nga gipang declare nato sa atong lips asa pa si asa pa dari sa bible pastor nga na ay example of declaration si Joshua magidatong gitake si Joshua 6 adto na punta dari si Joshua 10 nakabutang dari si Joshua chapter 10 verse 12 to 4 sa the living bible Verse 12, as the men of Israel were pursuing and harassing the foe, Joshua prayed aloud, Let the sun stand still over Gibeon, and let the moon stand in its place over the valley of Aijalon. Verse 13, and the sun and the moon didn't move until the Israeli army had finished the destruction of its enemies. This is described in greater detail in the book of Jashar. So the sun stopped in the heavens and stayed there for almost 24 hours. Amazing! 
the sun actually stopped in the sky and stayed there for 24 hours or almost 24 hours. According, there is a Joshua chapter 10. Why? Because Joshua declared it. He said, the sun stands still over Gibeon and let the moon stand in its place over the valley of Ajalon. Kana lang, simple nga declaration. And then nahitabo ang iya ang declare. If a man of God like Joshua can declare these things and have it happen, so can we. Kita mga New Covenant Christians. Because amazing pad, mas dako pa ang ato ang position o blessing. Karun nga, we are after already the day, uh, we are already after the sacrifice of Jesus. Naan nata sa New Covenant. Wala nata sa Old Covenant, parehas ni Joshua. Mas powerful o mas effective pag yun, ang atong declaration kumpara kay Joshua. Nga amazing kay dere kay Grabe ko kayo ka-powerful and effective. In fact, nag sa verse 14. There had never been such a day before. And there has never been another since when the Lord stopped the sun and moon. All because of the prayer of one man. But the Lord was fighting for Israel. Pero amazing kayo dere. So this goes me, this brings me to my next step. Next tip sa inyo para ma-receive din yung breakthrough. You need to be prayerful. When Jesus, all four of the Gospels, nag-record na siya nga si Jesus, nasuko dito sa mga money changers o mga people nga nagabaligya dito sa gawa sa temple. Niya, we took this up last Sunday, gi-drive away ni ang cattle and sheep nga naa dito. Because kung ano, ginatikasan nila ang mga tao, ilang mga scales were not right. They were taking advantage of the people who wanted to worship God. Niya, on say gisulti ni Jesus at the end of the story, ingon siya, my house shall become a house of prayer for all nations. And kabalubay yuta, na nakabutang po sa Bible, that God does not dwell in houses made by human hands. So, that's why sometimes a praise and worship, for example, katong po praise and worship nato dito sa, sa balay ni Nanay Normita, o pati po katong youth gathering na mo, itong una, katong nangat to me somewhere far away, katong resort. Pag praise and worship, I prefer to actually Rather than dito ko sa sulod mo tanaw, or dito ko sa mga, sa mga worship team, or sa worship leader mo tanaw, mas ganahan ko mong gawas mo tanaw sa sky while nagadayag sa gino. Nga man, because God does not dwell in human houses. And all the time, we are always worshiping inside of buildings. It is nice baka tong youth gathering, tong una nga, pagtanaw na ako sa gawas, makita na ako mountains, makita na ako ang sun, makita na ako ang mga trees, makita na ako ang beautiful creation ni Lord. And yan ako ma-feel ang presensya sa ginoon na sa iyang creation. Because the Bible says, God does not dwell in houses made by human hands. Pero mas amazing pagit ka ron. Because the Lord actually dwells inside all of us. Ever since Jesus died on the cross, He has made Christians sanctified and holy. To the point na pwede na mapuyo ang Holy Spirit sa kada sa atwa. The moment we receive Jesus Christ as Savior over our lives. Lalo na yun, if you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit that results in the praying in tongues. Pero, ang amazing thing ni Anna, we are now the house of prayer, nga ginasulti ni Jesus. We are now the house of prayer, nga ginasulti niya, that is a house of prayer for all nations. We are the people of God, the house of prayer niya. And kita mismo, since nagpuyo ang Holy Spirit sa atuwa, because we are considered by the Lord a house of prayer, kinakapuyo man siya sa atuwa, we must also fill our lives with prayer. And prayer is very powerful. Nakabutang yun dari sa verse 14. The Lord stopped the sun and moon, all because of the prayer of one man. In anaka powerful and effective ang prayer sa usa ka tao. Even there is a verse 12, nakabutang din sa si Joshua 10, Joshua prayed aloud. The secret to receiving your breakthrough is actually prayer. In fact, nakabutang din sa James chapter 5:16 sa The Passion Translation, confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another, then pray for one another to be instantly healed. For tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. Powerful kaayo ang prayer. And in the context, sa take up nato last, last receiving meeting, last, last Wednesday, ang kininginasulti diri sa Bible that the prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. Tanawo nato sa konteksto. There is a James 5.16. Sa konteksto, it's about praying for one another. So our prayers as righteous people, as Gilimpiuhan na sa dugo ni Kristo as people of His new covenant, people of His kingdom, citizens of heaven, powerful na. 
Pero ang context kag ginasulti ni James Derry, it is even more powerful whenever we pray for one another and one another. One is good for us to pray for one another, to join receiving meeting, even so online, so that we can pray together and we can pray as one, even in spirit, if we are not together in the physical body. Number three, na uh, sikreto para madawat nato ang ato ang breakthrough is na adiri sa uh, itake up nato karon pero basahon sa nato sa First Samuel chapter twenty three verse nine to thirteen. Nakabatang there is a verse 9. David learned that Saul was planning to attack him, but he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring the linen apron. Then David said, Lord, you are the God of Israel. I know for sure that Saul plans to come to Kila. He plans to destroy the town because of me. Verse 11. Will the citizens of Kila hand me over to him? Will Saul come down here as I've heard he would? Lord, you are the God of Israel. Please answer me. The Lord said, He will come down. On say gisulti ni Lord sa sa ano sa Psalm ninety one. Nakabutang dito sa Psalm ninety one. I will answer him whenever he calls. Whenever we call on God, the Lord will always answer us. And that's why the si David. Amazing ka ang kinabuhi ni David. Naga wonder siya kung dapat ba siya nga magadto sa town of Kila. Kung iya ba silang tabangan. Kung muadto ba si Saul dito, kung try ba siya pati ni Saul. And instead of making his own decision, he actually consulted the Lord. And how did the how did David uh, consult the Lord? Nakabotang sa verse 9, bring the linen apron. That is part of the priestly garment. That is ephod na siya sa laing translation. And na ay part dia sa kingly, uh, sa priest, sa uh, garments, high priest na ginatawag na itong Urim and Thummim. Kung makita na ito diha sa Old Testament, when the kings needed to consult God, they would call the high priest and consult the Lord through the Urim and Thummim. Now, the Bible doesn't specifically say how mag-answer si Lord through the Urim and Thummim. All that we know from the Word of God is that God answers, He speaks through the Urim and Thummim, or to the priestly ephod, kanang garments sa high priest, and He gives His answer to the kings of Israel na nagkakonsulta sa iya Nobody knows how this happens. According pa sa uban, basing nagsiga-siga, nag, mag, mag-form siya letters, or something, or words, something masabtan sa mga kings of Israel. The important thing here is, nagakonsulta si David kanan. And that is David's secret of victory. Muna sa verse 12, there is a first Samuel ng atong gibasa, sa first Samuel chapter 23, ingon again, David asked, will the citizens of Kila hand me and my men over to Saul? And the Lord said, they will. So David and his men left Kila. The num- total number of them was about 600. They kept moving from place to place. Saul was told that David had escaped from Kila, so he didn't go there. So amazing, Kai, because David consulted the Lord. And he did not just do it once. He did it again. As nakabatang dali, verse 12, again David asked. So nagapangutaan na si David. David has this attitude na sige siya pangutaan na sa ginoo. And then, amazing kay si Lord, kimutubag yun si Lord. Anak man si Lord, mo yung promise sa atuwa sa Psalm 91 that He will answer us whenever we call on Him in prayer, even as one of the translations says. And then, nakabutang dira that David was delivered from Saul. And David was also able to rescue the town of Kila because he was able to consult the Lord every time. And then, tanaw na to diri, na picture diri sa Urim and Thummim. Nakabutang diri nga, this is part of the priestly garments. And diri, this is the way that the kings of Israel consulted. And this is David's secret for victory sa iyang kinabuhi. Ay nga naman, always kiyo siya nagkakonsulta sa gino. Makita na nimo sa Chronicles, basahon ni mo Samuel, 2 Samuel, always kiyo si David nagkakonsulta sa gino. And this is what many, many Christians lack. Daghan kay mga Kristohanon, nga dili kabalo magkonsulta sa Ginoo always ta nagabuhat og decisions nga wala man lang tanang tanan sa Ginoo kung tama ba tong decision or dili gusto nato magbuhat og decision ang kasagaran is magbuhat sa decision and then they ask the Lord to bless that decision but that's not the way the way of the Lord for you to receive your breakthrough is for you to ask the Lord first kung tama ba imong decision for you to give the Lord freedom to say no to your plans like atong example bitaw na to ang take up na to last Sunday na ako'y gusto mahitabo 
Pero I was open enough to say, Lord, if it's not your will, ayaw ipahitabo. Don't let it happen. And it didn't happen. That means it's not God's will. If I force it, I might have been put in danger. So makita na to diha, and that you just need to be open. And you need to give the Lord the freedom to say no to your plans. Don't make plans first without asking the Lord first. Because as according to James chapter 4, nga gitik up na to last Sunday, that is pride and self-confidence. You cannot say nga, next week, next month, we will go and we will make a profit and we will go into this business. Dili daw ka makasulti, Anna. In fact, sa James chapter 4, kanang part nga kanang gibasa na to last week sa Sunday, is dito sa New Living Translation, naka-title na siya as warning against self-confidence. That is self-confidence. And we see David consulting the Lord again. There is a 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. Nakabutang dari sa 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 18. Now the Philistines had come and spread out for battle in the valley of Rephaim. David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go against the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord said to David, Go up, for I will certainly hand them over to you. One of David's secrets why he is such a successful king is because he had this habit of consulting with the Lord. And amazing guy, that's why David is considered Israel's greatest king. It's not Solomon. Kung pangutan ni mo Mohdeya, their greatest king is David. Even though he was not perfect, even though nagkamali siya, even though na siya mga sipiat, even though in ana siya, he was considered the greatest king to the point na ang flag karon sa Israel is called the Star of David. And then, there is a verse 20, padayon ta. So David came to Baal Perazim, and there he defeated them there and said, The Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. So he named the place Baal Perazim, Master of Breakthrough. Master of breakthroughs. Baal means Lord. Perazim means breakthrough. So in other translations, this actually means Lord of the breakthrough. Our God is the God of the breakthrough. That's why we can receive our breakthrough this year. Ako na lang i-explain din rin, anong Baal? Isn't that, basing hunahuna ang buong Kristo? Di ba Baal is a idol worshipped by the Kinanites to muna, yes, because that is an idol, gitawag nilang Baal means kanang idol nga kanak, gitawag nilang Lord. Pero the meaning, original meaning of the name Baal is not the name of the idol. The original meaning of the name Baal is Lord. Monang ginatawag nilang Lord tong ilang idol, pero kabalota false na siya. Demonyo to as we have taken up before sa Sunday. Pero, dere, ang meaning is Baal is Lord and Perazi means breakthroughs. So, Baal Perazim literally means Lord of the Breakthroughs. And because our God is the Lord of our breakthrough, that's why you and I can receive the breakthroughs that has been promised to us and mentioned in Hebrews 11. Nga take up nato ganiha. In you know, there is a verse 20, The Lord has broken through my enemies before, like a breakthrough of water. Now, daghan mga Kristohanon, na daghan tag mga sermons, and daghan tag madunggan ng mga mga preachers or mga Christians nga nagatok about breakthrough. Pero kung i-google search lang na nimo, dili kayo nimo makita ng verse. Now, kini ang verse kung asagikan ang word na breakthrough na gina-mention sa mga Kristohanon often. This is com- this comes from 2 Samuel chapter 5. And mas klaro diri sa Amplified Translation that God is breaking through for David. And God broke through for David because David consulted him all the time. Mona, there is a Proverbs chapter 3 na ay, na ay ka ng advice si Lord para sa ito. Ingan there is a Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6 sa Amplified Translation. Trust and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your insight, on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize Him and He will make your path straight and smooth. Removing obstacles that block your way. Di ba breakthrough na? Wala siyang buti pa sa buti breakthrough. God will remove the obstacles, the walls, the Jericho walls that stand in front of you that block our way into His blessing nga gipromise niya sa ato. And that is exactly a verse that fits so much. I'm, I praise the Lord for this. Nga, gihatag niya ng verse ako. Because, musakto yun. Mus, mufit yun. Mujive yun. The Lord has been speaking very clearly. Nga mogin yung mensahe. Nga gusto niya speak sa atong church karon. And I really, really hope that most of our members will be able to hear this. 
So, nakabotang dali, trust and rely confidently on Lord. Don't rely on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge Him. Mona siyang sekreto so that we will receive our breakthrough. But, how do we do that, Pastor? How do we not trust in our own understanding? How do we rely confidently on the Lord? How do we acknowledge Him? We acknowledge and recognize God whenever we consult Him for our decisions. Just like James chapter 1, verse 5 tells us. James 1, 5, Amplified Translation, If any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstance, he is to ask our benevolent God who gives to everyone generously and without rebuke or blame and it will be given to him. Wisdom is not automatic sa mga Kristohanon. It is asked for. And it's asked for to guide us through a decision or circumstance. Claro kayo sa James 1, 5, sa Amplified Translation. So you need to ask the Lord for your decisions. You need to consult Him. You need to ask Him. And we need to have our own Urim and Thummim as well. What does that mean, Pastor? That means we need to know how to consult God. We need to have a way nga makapangutan na takay Lord sa atong mga decisions. Now, ako lahi akong way sa inyong way. Over the years, the Lord has been able to teach me that I can read signs from Him. It's a mixture of reading signs and it's a mixture also of praying unto the Lord for guidance. Now, that guidance for me, kanang way na ko, is not necessarily your way. Every Christian has a unique way to hear from the Lord. What do I mean by that, Pastor? Yung sa mamang, mino mi sarad, dili inana. Ang pinakagwapo, you have to find that way. Why? Because God's calling to us, my God, is, is we are very unique. Each Christian, each believer is unique. And the way the Lord speaks to us is also unique and also very specific. But remember, specific by the love of the Lord para sa toa. He knows all of his sheep by name. And sa John chapter 10, nakabotang diha, My sheep hear my voice. My sheep know my voice. So that means you have to listen to the voice of Jesus. How do I do that, Pastor? One way that you can do that is through the Word of God. Now, ako ang best nga mahatag sa inyo, ha, nga guidance karon is use the Word of God. And sermons are one of the best ways to have an urim and thumim. Kung nakay decision nga kailangan pang ask the Lord for it. Lord, unsa akong dapat buhaton? Guide me through this sermon that I'm listening to now. And it has to be a New Covenant sermon. Kaysa sa 2 Timothy chapter 2:15, ingon diha nga ang pool, ang word of ang ang alagad sa Ginoo, kailangan kabalo mo bahin-bahin gikan sa New Covenant and Old Covenant. Kay na, kailangan ibahin-bahin between New Covenant and Old Covenant. Kay na mo apply sa to na pwede dili mo apply sa to. Ah. Na poy things nga mo apply lang sa mga Hudyo and things nga mo apply sa mga Kristohanon karon sa New Covenant sa Ginoo. So what is one of the best ways you can use the Word of God as an Orimon Thumim. Now, how will you do that? I cannot tell you because God guides us each in a specific way. Since specific man, ang love ni Lord para sa to, and since unique man kada Kristuhanan, specific pod o unique ang way nga mag-guide si mo. For example, some Christians find that reading their Bible is a very good guide. Some people naman like hearing their Bible. Lain-lain mga tagway, lain-lain ang ato ang kanang unsaon nga dali lang masulod sa atong heart or dali lang ta makadungog gikan sa Ginoo. Basta one way I can I can advise you is always use the word of God. Like si Pastor Joby, na siya testimony sa ako. Ah. Nga iyang spine daw nagasakit-sakit daw. Naagi daw pain nga ma-feel niya from the top of his uh, back to sa lower part. Unya throughout the he has always been praying for healing and restoration pero wala man niya na receive ang breakthrough yet. Pero amazing kayo, kay ingon daw siya sa kuwa. Last Sunday, pag paminaw niya sa sermon, we were discussing the Word of God about how it is God's will to heal each and every one of us, di ba? And as he was listening to that, naging rema to ni Lord para sa iya. That night, nagbasa siya sa iyang Bible, and then uh, na come across niya tong word, uh, katong sa book of Mark, nga si Jesus opened a blind man's ears by saying, Ephata. Ingon siya, Ephata, and then na-open ang hearing sa uh, deaf man, the idol, the blind man. So, pag-open sa hearing sa deaf man, the Lord gave him a revelation. And he spoke that over his body. He spoke that over his back, his spine. Ingon siya, Ephata. And after that, wala na siya naka-feel o pain sa iyang spine. 
wala na siya pain wala na ka receive siya breakthrough ang ginapangayon niya sa Ginoo for a long time na ngayon ano, he was praying for healing and restoration wala man but the moment that he used that word ephata which means it is the original word you know, it's one of the original Greek and Hebrew nga nakabutang sa Bible nga gipreserve gina siya sa Ginoo diha because naagi na siya special meaning and pag it means to open up so Later on, na learn niya na the reason that uh, most people have problems sa ilang spine, mo sakit ilang spine or ilang back, is because the eye, ang cartilage mangod sa atong spine is as we age, mag ano na siya, mag degrade na siya or mawala. And na mahitabo ana since mo malang diha man nagaagi ang atong nerve root, sometimes maipit atong nerve root kay mga 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 bones sa spine naga sarado na unya maipit sometimes dia and mo na naga cause of back pain or spinal problem kabalo ko ni ani because the lord healed me in 2013 from a spinal disc extrusion he healed me miraculously without operation or medication or physical therapy and amazing pud gibuhat ni lord sa kinabuhi ni pastor Joby because that became a rema for him and he followed the lord and he asked the lord for guidance and the lord led him to that verse in the book of mark where jesus opened up a blind man, a deaf man's hearing by saying the words ephata and by using that word the lord gave him his breakthrough his healing para sa yung back o sa yung spine. And that is one of the ways that we can have a breakthrough from the Lord. Since specific manggod ni Lord ang iyang love para sa tuwa, specific manggod ang instruction sa kada usang akristuhanon, and because unique tang tanan, unique o specific po, the way si Lord mag-lead sa tuwa, sa ato ang pagkonsulta sa iya. Kaya nga no, there are many Christians nga nagduol sa ako over the years nga pastor ko. Mga tano sila, pastor, unsa man akong buhaton? Dapat ba na ako ni Dawaton ng trabaho? Dapat ba kumuhawa sa ina ng trabaho? Dapat ba na ako sugton si ina ni? Or dapat ba na ako, si, uh, dapat ba na ako i-continue ni? Dapat ba na ako i-stop ni? When you mayingon ko sila, I cannot answer that for you because dili man ako si Lord. The best thing I can do for you is to advise you, James 1.5 sa Amplified, to pray about it. Consult the Lord about it and the Lord will give you the answer. He won't give me the answer kay lahat man ang leading Lord sa kwa. He will guide me with respect to the church and with respect to my own life and respect to my own family. Pero with respect to your decision, the Lord will send that answer to you. He won't send it to me. He will send it to you because specific pod o unique pod ang iyang leading o iyang guidance o pag-istorya sa atoa kada usa sa atoa ang mga kristwano so find your own orim and thumim because I also have my own and I suggest that you make the word of God central sa imuhang pagkonsulta sa ginoo okay sa akong pagkonsulta sa ginoo pastor unsa na ang pagkabalo nga tama akong pagpaminaw well one of the best ways to know it is through peace of course na I trial and error na sometimes mo mali ka and then you learn from that. Nga mali di itong pagpaminaw sa Ginoo. And then you napoy mga times na tama ka. You learn from that as well. Buhaton ani mo. Wala nagapangay kog mga feedback sa people sa mga sermons is because when people tell me magod that the sermon spoke to them, ingon ko nga mo di na siya ang tama. Sa kotong gibuhat ako that week, mo nang tama ang pagpaminaw na ako sa Ginoo. Mo nang tama ang pagkonsulta na ako sa Ginoo. And I'm able to do it again. I make it a learning experience. You make it a learning experience as well. Kung nang naamoy ginakonsulta sa Ginoo, try to find out what works and what doesn't. And you will know that kay makitaan man nimo kung sa sipyat, makitaan pa nimo kung sa tama. Okay? On sa victory, on sa loss, okay? Pero naapoy wonderful way that you can assess a situation kung tama ba or dili imong pagkasabot sa leading sa Ginoo sa mga. The best way is to have the peace of the Lord guide you. According sa Colossians 3:15, nakabatang dia, let the peace of Christ the inner calm of one who walks daily with him be the controlling factor in your hearts, deciding and settling questions that arise. So, klaro yung kaideri, nga kung nakay questions, kung nakay decision nga kailangan buhaton, you let the peace of Jesus guide you. What does this mean? Kung tama imong decision na ay peace imong kasing-kasing, kaya mo ng normal nga state sa Kristuhanon. Whereas, kung mali imong decision, sometimes, ingon ka nga, tama man sa ako ang panghuna-huna, Tama man sa tanan na akong pananaw, it makes logical sense, pero wala mong ipisa kung kasing-kasing. Nga man, or sometimes grabe ang kulba, grabe ang kahadlok. Sometimes the Lord is warning you that that is the wrong decision. Kaya kita mang God, we are human beings, we do not know everything. But God knows everything. So He's able to guide us through His peace. Sa lain pong translation, that is sa Colossians 3.15, nakabotang diya ingon po ni Paul, let peace be your umpire. Unsa na umpire? Referee. 
mo nang masulti sa imuha kung in ba ang bola or out ba ang bola. Mo nang magsulti sa ang referee ang magsulti sa imuha kung naka-violation na baka or tama ba na imo gibuhat or naka-point na baka dito sa basket. In ana ang buti pasabot sa umpire. So ang buti pasabot ni Paul Derry, let peace be your guide. Let peace help you to make the right decisions. Kay ko ang tama gid na siya nga decision na agi peace sa imo sulod sa imong kasing-kasing. Because that is the normal state of every Christian. So motto, church, ang atong three ways. Mo lang three secrets to receiving your breakthrough in this year sa atong transformation breakthrough. One is declare the right things. Declare God's word back to Him. Number two is to pray to the Lord because we are a house of prayer unto God. And number three, we need to consult every decision we make unto the Lord and give Him the freedom. Most Christians kasi, Masanalan sila makita ang bersikulo nga mag-support sa ilahang gusto. Feeling nila mo na tong guidance Lord sa ila. Dili in ana. Even if na kay verse, even ang timing sa imong pagbuhat should be consulted with the Lord. And you will receive your breakthrough. Ma-receive na to tong receive sa mga heroes of faith sa Hebrews 11 verse 33 and 34. Basahon na to sa because of their faith they took over kingdoms they ruled fairly they received the blessings God has promised tapos nakabutang po sa 34 they escaped being killed their weakness was turned into strength they became powerful in battle so when you know how to consult the Lord when you pray to the Lord and when you declare the right things over your life you will also be able to rule in life you will receive the blessings God has promised. You will escape danger. Your weakness will be turned into strength and you will become powerful in God's kingdom. That's what God wants for every one of us. And, pero kini mga heroes na kini, nadawat ba nila tanan mga promises sa ginaw? Wala. Kaya wala pa namatay si Kristo para sa ilaha. At that time, the new covenant had not yet arrived. God's kingdom was not yet at hand. Wala pa naabot dari sa kalibutan. Unlike para sa ato ah. Basahan natin sa Hebrews 11, verse 39 to 40, sa The Passion Translation ta. These were the true heroes commended for their faith. Katong i-mention ganyan, sila David, sila Samuel. Yet they lived in hope without receiving the fullness of what God, of what was promised them. So wala daw nila na-receive ang katibukan or ang fullness. But now God has invited us to live in something better than what they had, faith's fullness. So we have something better. Kita din mga New Covenant believers, mas maay di itong kahimtang sa ilaha. We are even stronger and have a better position than David, than Samuel, than Jephthah, than Joshua, than all these heroes of faith na nakamention sa Hebrews 11. Ganun man, Pastor. Because they did not have the Holy Spirit living in them like we do now. Tungo na, the Holy Spirit would only come upon them, but diligid na kapuyo sa ilang kasing-kasing ang Holy Spirit. Unlike sa ato akaron. Itong una, they were forgiven by God. But the blood of Jesus did not yet cleanse them kaya wala pa man namatay si Jesus. And according sa the book of Leviticus and even sa Hebrews, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So even si Moses, wala well, nakasulod sa promised land. And even David had to be rebuked by Nathan. So we have a better position than they have. And we have a better, bigger advantage. Mula diri sa Luke chapter 7, verse 28 sa The Passion Translation. Ingon si Jesus diri. Throughout history, there was never found a man as great as John. John the Baptist ba? Or the baptizer, mas tama. Yet those who now walk in God's kingdom realm, though they appear to be insignificant, will become even greater than he. Mas kuyaw pa ba daw ta kay John the Baptist? Grabe tong ministry ni John the Baptist, daghan siya na batismuan. She is the voice in the wilderness nga nagatawag sa mga tao, nagapoint sa mga people about sa coming ni Jesus. Iyang igagaw. Pero, ingon pa diri sa ni Jesus, mas kuyaw ang mga tao sa kingdom of God. Mas kuyaw ta karon Because why? Under the new covenant, we are already cleansed by the blood of Jesus as promised in 1 John. And we are also having the Holy Spirit live in us. And karon tanan blessings, tanan favor ni Lord are already yes and amen in Christ Jesus according sa book of Corinthians. So mas maayo atong kahimtang karon. According pa sa the Living Bible nga translation, mas kuyaw pa even ang pinakalis sa citizen of heaven. Kita according kay Paul sa Philippians chapter 2, we are now citizens of heaven. 
And because we are now citizens of heaven, that's why we have a better, we have more promises. We can receive the fullness nga wala na dawat sa kaning mga heroes of faith that is sa Hebrews 11. Nag-isulti, there is a 39 or 40. Wala pa nila na dawat ang katibukan. Wala pa nila na dawat ng promises. Wala pa nila na dawat ng breakthrough. Pero kita karon, madawat na to. Because we are now under the new covenant, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit lives in us. And there is no victory. There is no breakthrough. Madili na to ma-receive gikan sa gino. Muna atong message for tonight. I hope you heard it. I hope share this with other people. Please let our uh, members hear this as well. Kaya kailangan yun nato ng word kitang tanan. So, padayon ta sa ato ang buluhaton karo gabi yun na. Kung kinsi ready di as communion, let us take the bread. Let's lift up the bread. On the night you were betrayed, Lord Jesus, you lifted the bread, you gave thanks and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, you said in your word, Lord, in 1 Corinthians 11, O salang rason, why Christians are weak and sick and are dying early, is because they fail to discern your body, Lord. Lord, we discern your body tonight, Lord. Nasayod me, Lord God, na by your stripes we are healed. We know, O oh God, from your word in Isaiah 53 verse 4 that our sicknesses, our pains, our sorrows, and our distresses were taken by you on that cross. We know from 1 John 4, 17, Lord, that as you are, so are we in this world. Wala kay sakit, wala kay balatian. You are enjoying the full favor and blessings at the right hand of the Father. We thank you, Lord, that as you are, so are we in this world. And by that, Lord, we are discerning your body, Lord. The opposite of 1 Corinthians 11, the only reason named in the entire New Testament why Christians are weak and sick and are dying early, the opposite will happen to us. Lord. We will be strong, we will be healthy, and we will live long. Let us partake the body of the Lord Jesus. Let us lift up the cup. On the same night, Lord Jesus, you lifted the cup, you gave thanks and said, This is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It is shed for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, thank you for your blood that has washed us clean from every sin, past, present, and future. Thank you for your promise, Lord, in Hebrews 10.14, in the King James Version, where it says, that by one sacrifice you have perfected forever those who are sanctified. Thank you, Lord, for your promise, Lord, in Proverbs, Lord God, that you pour out blessings upon the heads of the righteous, and that because of what you have done for us, Lord Jesus, you became sin on that cross so that we would become the righteousness of God in Christ, according to 2 Corinthians 5.21. Thank you, Lord, because of your blood, every blessing is now yes and amen in Jesus' name. We receive, Lord, along with your blood, every blessing, every good success, every favor, every victory in your word. We receive every breakthrough as well. We declare it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's drink the blood of the Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you so much, Lord, for this night, Lord. We believe, O oh God, that everyone who is listening to the sermon right now will receive a special breakthrough, Lord. Lord with the exercise of these three great keys found in your word, O oh God. They will receive breakthroughs of finances, Lord. Breakthrough in their health, breakthrough in their work, breakthrough in their business, O oh God. Breakthrough in the salvation of the members of their family, Lord. We believe it, Lord, and we receive it, O oh God. But we know, Lord God, there are things, there are naisagabal, O oh God, na walls, na hindrances, kinabutang enemy. But Lord, you will set those aside, O oh God, because you are a mighty God. Thank you so much, Lord, for blessing all of our viewers tonight, even mga nagatan ni aning sermon, Lord God, at a later time, Lord God. Thank you for blessing their finances, Lord, their studies, Lord God, their schooling, their sources of income, Lord. It will be blessed, O oh God, because you are a wonderful God, and we are your children under your new covenant, Lord, because you are a mighty Father who loves to give good gifts to his children, Lord, for those who ask him. 
Thank you so much, Lord, for blessing the New Covenant Christ Church. Salamat, Lord, sa pagtabang sa ako, Lord God, even sa work na mo, Lord, ni Brother Jay. Salamat kay Lord, sa pag-bless sa entire church, O oh God, every member, Lord God, in every area of their life, Lord. Thank you for blessing Pastor Arman, Sister Gina, Harold, and Angel, O oh God, in every area. Thank you for blessing Pastor Dexter, Sister Mimay, Lord God, in every area of their life as well. Thank you so much, Lord, for sending your salvation to the people in Israel. Thank you for protecting and guiding them, Lord. And thank you so much, Lord, for um, blessing, Lord God, the economy of the Philippines. Lord. Bless our president, our vice president, our mayor, O oh God. Use them, Lord God, to prosper this great nation, Lord God, that belongs to you. We give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. Now the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you from all harm. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his perfect shalom, both now and forever in Jesus' name. The people of God say, Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. We really believe na importante kayo ng mensahe ng gihatag ni Lord para sa ato akarong gabi una. Don't forget to join us tomorrow sa ato ang church service sa church site dito sa Bangkarohan at 9.30 in the morning. 9.15 na anay devotional pero you can still have coffee afterwards. Pero sa 9.30 magsugod na ang praise and worship and then after that there will be the service proper. Uh, thank you for listening tonight. Shalom, you take care. Goodbye, I'll see you more. Bye-bye.